So the question is, what constitutes the resurrection of the Roman Empire? Now, I know that, you know, history is sometimes very complicated and it's sometimes hard to grasp and discern all, all kinds of things. You've heard, those of you who have been in the church for quite some time and those of you who haven't, might have heard that there will be uh, seven resurrections of the so-called Holy Roman Empire. Now, you probably heard also that six of those resurrections have already occurred. And the seventh one is actually what we are witnessing as European integrations centered around Germany. Now, let me just clarify to you what constitutes the resurrection of the Roman Empire. This is based on 1971 notes. Uh, somebody called Gunnar Freibergs was uh, the one who composed these notes. And uh, I found them on my files, brethren. I thought they're very interesting and uh, they're very needed to be explained and expounded to you for the simple reason that again history is not the uh, history is actually the weak point of many of us and many of you and therefore you may find yourself being confused with all sorts of things so you see in studying the historical fulfillments of the various resurrections of the roman system it is important to bear several basic principles in mind well not every governmental system arising in italy after 476 AD is of necessity a resurrection of the empire. Okay, well, as you probably remember, in 476 AD, brethren, the Roman Empire was destroyed and was permanently divided into its uh, left leg and right leg from Daniel's vision, vision of that, vision of the, uh, of the statue, and therefore the Roman Empire remained divided. So, however, there were various governmental systems after that arose in Italy and even in Europe, but they're not of necessity a resurrection of the empire. So number one is that not every governmental system is, you know, of necessity a resurrection of the empire. And secondly, nor is collaboration with Pope a deciding factor. Because a resurrection of the empire, brethren, is a actually a combination of various factors, paramount among which must be a desire by the resurging power to imitate the Roman system and to actually look on itself as either a continuation or a revival of Rome. Okay, so the paramount is that the governmental structure must see itself as a continuation and again, alliance with the popery with papacy is not necessarily the paramount. Now, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, for example, actually minted coins with the inscription Empire Restored, which obviously leaves no doubt as to what he thought. Now, the same, however, cannot be said for all the national states that emerged after the demise of the original Rome. For example, the Vandals. We have the Vandals in history, Brandon. The Vandals on the surface, they would appear more as enemies of Rome than as a revival of the system. They even sacked Rome itself in 455 AD and never set up a kingdom anywhere in Italy. On top of that, the Vandal kingdom was established in 429 AD, long before the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. How then could the Vandals be classed or classified as a revival of ancient Rome? Well, first of all, the attacks of the Vandals against Rome are not all that important in this discussion, because, brethren, Satan is divided against himself. We know that from Matthew chapter 12, verse 26. So should we expect then harmony in his system? Obviously not. Now, the Vandals appeared on the scene as enemies of Rome, that's true, but look what happened. In 429, they crossed over into North Africa, and there, in what had previously been one of the wealthiest provinces of the empire, they established an independent state. And this state made an uh, alliance with Rome, and most important of all, it set up its own government on the basis of the Roman system. In that regard, it was an independent continuation of the Roman way of life. Now the question is, if the Vandals were a resurrection of the Roman Empire, then why not also the Visigoths who set up kingdom in Spain at about the same time? 
Well, here is the difference. The Vandal Kingdom was a completely independent state, but set up along Roman lines. The Visigoths, however, were incorporated by the Roman Empire as, you know, federati, confederates. A Gothic state was created within the Roman state. We find that in Langer's Encyclopedia of World History, 4th edition, page 158. So you see the Visigoths administered southern France and Spain on behalf of the empire and by the emperor's express request. In this regard, the Visigoths were a part of the original empire, not a resurrection of it. The Vandals, however, were independent. Now, but what would you know? What about the fact that the Vandal state was established, you know, 429 AD, long before Rome ever fell in 476? Well, what about that? Well, just this, brethren. The Vandals, although established before, they continued to survive for many years after Rome itself had fallen. Now, the powers of the Vandals, Heruli and Ostrogoths were all independent states that continued to perpetuate the Roman system after the original empire itself had collapsed. In this way, the Vandals definitely were a resurrection of Rome because they were established along the Roman lines after all and then continued you know, after the fall of the original empire. Now we have also a question of the, there is a part of Italy called Lombardia, named after the Lombards. Now, interestingly enough, the Lombards, so they, you know, they came into Italy and they established themselves there. Now, the Lombards never qualified as a resurrection of the Roman Empire. Even though they invaded Italy, their kingdom never tried to imitate ancient Rome, you see, that's the thing. And also, nor did they look on themselves as either a revival or a continuation of Rome. They did not have Rome as their capital. They never entered into any kind of alliance with the empire. We find that again in Langer's book, page 164. In fact, the Lombards were just a kingdom, later Catholic, which happened to be established in Italy. And that's all, but they never identify with Rome or the Roman system. But brethren, again, Catholicism is no factor for qualifying as a resurrection of the empire. If it were, then England would have been a prime candidate, which is, of course, unthinkable. Because if you remember anything from the English history, England used to be a staunch Catholic country. Now, the Lombards never were a revival of Rome. During the Middle Ages... There were many kings who entered into alliance with the papacy. For instance, the French Charles of Anjou, he made an unsuccessful bid for the imperial crown in 1273. But not everyone who makes a deal with the Pope qualifies as Holy Roman Emperor. Charles lost the bid and the imperial crown went to the German Habsburgs who held it until 1806. And that's exactly what the Habsburgs also represent, one of the, you know, continuation or revival of the Holy Roman Empire. Then you also have the unifier of Italy, Garibaldi. What about Garibaldi and the uniting of, of Italy? Well, brethren, it is true that Garibaldi did not get along with the Pope. So again, you know, uh, as you see, as I said, the quality, you know, being, uh, being anti-Catholic or anti-Pope, doesn't mean that somebody is not a resurrection of the Roman Empire. So Garibaldi did not get along with the Pope, but neither did many previous leaders of the revivals of Rome, including Napoleon. Now, in Garibaldi's case, the Pope plainly stood in the way of a completely reunited Italy. The nation was finally reunited in 1871, with Rome as its capital. However, the one thing that qualified Italy as a revival of Rome was not that it was unified, brethren, but it was simply the fact that Mussolini proclaimed it as such. He proclaimed it as continuation of the Roman Empire. In fact, the word fascism comes from the old, you know, old Latin word, el fascio, 
which was, I, f I think it was a symbol used by the Roman consuls, I think. Uh, we'll have to find, I'll have to dig out again that information. But anyway, the El Fascio was, uh, was uh, a, a, a certain symbol used by the Roman Empire. That's why that's why they call themselves the fascists. That's why they call their party, the Muslims party, fascists. You know that they were just trying to resurrect their old Roman Empire. And in, in 1936, after the defeat of Ethiopia, the Italian king Victor Emmanuel III assumed the title of emperor, and Mussolini proclaimed that this was the empire restored. You see, because he dreamt about. He dreamed about restoring the old ancient empire. So he identified himself with the Roman system, unlike the Lombards before him, for example. And uh, so this continuation you know, from the reuniting, reuniting of Italy until Mussolini. Mussolini was in alliance with Hitler. Of course, Hitler also dreamed about the resurrecting of the Roman Empire. That's that old project, as you all know, uh, didn't didn't work out and it, it just ended in dust and ashes in 1945 due to the intervention of God of Israel who used his own people Israel after flesh English and Americans to basically put an end to this resurrection of the Gentile German dominated and Italian dominated holy so-called Roman Empire now at the end of the World War II again after the fall of Mussolini Italy formally renounced any claims to being an empire and you see that resurrection of the Roman system is therefore once again dead all we have at present time is the Republic of Italy which makes no pretensions about being a resurrected Rome. So it remains for another government to rise, which will actually claim that it is a rebirth of the Roman Empire. And that government we're going to be better seeing with our own eyes in our own time. Now, here is a summary, to give you a summary, other than the chart that we have just uh, sent to you here in the chat box. Here is a summary in greater detail of the seven resurrections of the Roman Empire. Okay. So the Roman Empire fell 476 AD and the first resurrection was done by the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian. Justinian's restoration which lasted from 554 until 586. The second resurrection of the Roman Empire happened by the dynasty called Carolinians. Carolinians and they began by, you know, that dynasty began by Charlemagne and maintained by his descendants. However, by 924, there was no one left to claim the imperial crown. So this second resurrection lasted since 800 until 924. Then the third resurrection came and it came in and through three German dynasties, Ottonians, Sali, Salians, and Hohenstaufens. Okay, so in 962 began the third resurrection and it lasted until 1250. All right, so again, in that period, 962 through 1250, we had the resurrection of the Roman Empire. It was being alive through the uh, rulers from these three German dynasties. Uh, it began with Ottonians by Otto I. So the empire then continued on through successive German royal houses without interruption. It ended in 1250, inaugurating the terrible time without an emperor, as it is called. That terrible time lasted from 1250 until 1273. It's called Interregnum. In Latin meaning period without a ruler. Then came the fourth resurrection of the Roman Empire in 1273 and it was resurrected through what I, me I mentioned to you through the Habsburgs. The Habsburgs, they were the basically the again Germanic line, the based in Vienna in, Be in, in Vienna in Austria, nevertheless the Habsburg famous Habster, famous Habsburg dynasty. So in 1273 until 1806 lasted the rulership of the Habsburg dynasty. Their most prominent ruler was Charles V. Now, of course, there are various other rules, but I'm, you know, I'm just giving you the overview of these 
of these seven resurrections. The fifth then resurrection came in basically when this one ended, came through Napoleon. As you know, Napoleon was staunch anti-Catholic. Napoleon basically rose to power in 1804 and his power lasted until 1814 when he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo. And so by 1806, the Habsburgs basically died and their rulership was over and Napoleon took in 1806 until 1814. Now that was the fifth, you know, resurrection of the Roman Empire. The sixth one had the roots with Garibaldi uniting Italy. The sixth one actually came through Mussolini and his ruling. So in 1936, as I said, King, the Italian King Victor Emmanuel III, he assumed the title of Emperor of Ethiopia and the Italian state was acclaimed as a restored empire. And as you know, brethren, Italy, as you might know, Italy capitulated in 1943 to the Allies and uh, basically distanced itself from the Axis power. So that re sixth revival basically was in the last century during the rulership of fascists. The root there was, you know, when Italy was only united, reunited, or that is united in 18, 1871, and that was the preparation for that sixth resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire when the fascists came into power in 1933 in Italy. And then it all was ended in 1943 with the capitulation in Italy and completely in 1945 when Hitler was completely destroyed. So these are the six resurrections that have happened so far. Justinian's restoration, Carolinians, Ottonian Salians and Hohenstaufen, the fourth one Habsburgs, Napoleon, now Mussolini, and now we're waiting the seventh one we're seeing with our own eyes and we've been warning the Anglo-Saxon world and the House of Israel and all the world we've been warning about the resurrection of, of the Roman Empire which will be led again by Germany and we've been telling people about the rise of Germany. We've been warning the modern Israel about the rise of Germany and how significant it is that Germany is now coming and is basically climbing up the ladder, the social ladder, to the world prominence and power. Now, of course, I've given you these figures, I mean, all these years, but as near as can be determined, the actual dates of duration for the various revivals of the Roman Empire, the figures that I mentioned. So, this will be also now typed out very soon in, in Word. Possibly we might just uh, even elaborate at some points to make these notes more understandable. But I'm hoping that this short study will help you understand about those seven revivals, prophesied revivals, of the so-called Holy Roman Emperor, Empire.